All right, what's up everybody? 199 X-Ray. Coming to you from a beautiful Southern California day. So I've been thinking a lot lately about artificial super intelligence. Like, like thinking computers, like computers with intelligence. And I'm three quarters of the way through a book called Super Intelligence. By this guy named Nick Bostrom, professor of philosophy at Harvard, I think. He goes all into paths, dangers, and strategies of super intelligent computers or machines. And it's really fascinating and really has taken up most of my thought the past couple months. So basically the, I think it's imminent. I think it's, it won't be very long at all before we have uh, thinking computers. And it's potentially very dangerous. Um, as Elon Musk says, the quote unquote real life Iron Man or real life Tony Stark. I heard him say recently that he thinks super intelligence, artificial super intelligence could be potentially more dangerous than nuclear weapons. Potentially more dangerous than nuclear weapons. And that humans will be a pet Labrador if we're lucky. Which I think sums it up pretty well. One of the most fascinating things for me is the idea of rapid recursive self-improvement after the crossover point. The crossover point is when efforts to improve the machine's intelligence are performed by the machine itself. So, event, so at first, the human, a team of humans most likely are going to be working on it to get the, the thinking, the AI to function and to make it better. The crossover point happens is when the humans are no longer working on it, the AI is working on itself. It's improving itself. And it can do this much more effectively and, and rapidly than humans could um, because of its hardware. And if it has, a, say, an internet connection, it could improve itself 24 hours a day on millions of computers. So once a crossover point happens, an AI could surpass human intelligence within a matter of hours. So Bostrom in the book talks about uh, a hypothetical AI called the Paperclip Maximizer. And so this AI is only is programmed to maximize the total number of paper clips in the world. Right? So how long before it takes a treacherous turn and realizes that humans break and lose paper clips and that there'd be more paper clips without humans. So if you get rid of the humans, you maximize the paper clips. So a lot of people will say, "Well, what if you put it in a a sandbox, so to speak?" What if you make the AI in a controlled environment where it can't access the internet? Um, but the only thing about it, it's super intelligent. Its ability to strategize and plan is going to far exceed ours. So it could act nice. It could play nice for the first, you know, few months, first year, first 12 years, until eventually they let it out. And then all of a sudden, it takes a treacherous turn. So the single greatest danger for AI is existential catastrophe. In other words, it attempting to make our species extinct. And there's a number of ways it could do this. Not just, say, hacking nuclear weapons silo or something, because it might kill itself. It could use like nanotechnology, build nanobots and they go into people's bloodstream and then 
lays dormant for years and years and, and everybody and almost the whole human population and then when the moment comes it activates the nanobots and fucking kills everybody so we we would be fighting trying to fight something that could plan to strategize way beyond what we could and that could possibly exploit laws of physics and laws of chemistry that we're not even aware of yet it could discover new laws of nature and use them against us so the whole premise is that we need to be alert and we need to be aware of AI and we need to be careful once a super once an artificial super intelligence is established and has a goal there's really not much we could do to stop it I think because it could make humans participate in its plans and we, they wouldn't even know it so that's what I've so I've been thinking a lot about that lately and it's been fascinating me. <laughs>